to see Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Okay, so it is 58 degrees in my office right now because the heat is messed up. And that's actually a high because it has been at one time in my office 55 degrees. Now, that, you, you may be saying, well, that's not very cold. You know, it's like 13 degrees outside where I'm living. Well, when you're sitting there and it's constantly under 60 degrees for most of the day and you're not really moving so therefore all of your appendages are slowly uh, deteriorating <laughs> within the cold that's what makes it a little rough so if they could just go ahead and get that heat fixed that'd be great uh, so anyway uh, I've got many suggestions to talk about this book I didn't talk about the first one because it was such a mess and it really wasn't worth my time um, it, it really kind of makes me sad because the story was pretty solid it just wasn't carried out very well and the artwork is cool because the artwork is very reminiscent of like the old style and they did the title of the book Dead Man kind of like they did uh, Ragman with where they do the dynamic lettering it's almost the same and this story is kind of more the same. It, it's a pretty solid story. It's just not carried out very well. You know what I mean? Um, the, the first issue had him basically trying to help Commissioner Gordon not get tricked into like setting off a nuclear reactor or something like that. And uh, it, it was okay, but it was just very very messy you know what I mean there was a lot of stuff going on there was a lot of very dynamic sentences that didn't really go anywhere a lot of weird preachiness from the character that seemed cool but didn't go anywhere you know what I mean a lot of sporadic a lot of sporadic stuff so this this issue is kind of more of the same we look at the cover here and it's pretty cool I, you know I, at first I didn't know this was a circus carriage you know, I just thought this was like a burning carriage. I didn't understand anything about it. I was like, okay, there's there's a fire, lightning, raining. Okay, I'll buy it. And then we get inside here, and uh, it goes to the title page, but it's not really a title page. It just says Dead Man. And then you see a small little box inside. It says written, drawn, and colored by Neil Adams, but it's in his signature, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, you can't really read it. It's lettered uh, by Clem Robbins, cover by Neil Adams again. So Neil Adams did the cover, he did the writing, the drawing, and the coloring. So that's always a good sign if they're a good, um, a good artist and writer, kind of like Sean Gordon Murphy. You know you're going to be in for a good time. And this almost is. It's just a little confusing because it's so fast-paced. Um, it's kind of like when you're watching a movie and it's just like bam, 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 bam. It, give the reader a second to breathe. You know what I mean? And he does, but at the same time he's giving somebody a room to breathe, he's also moving on to something else. So you're kind of like, what? 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 This guy's here now? And now this guy's here? And, and, and now his brother's dead? And what? I, I, don't, I don't understand. But anyway, let's get to this comic book. So we start right off the bat. We're already in the middle of a scene, action-wise. Dead man has gotten in, is, is getting into another guy. That's his power. Is he's he's astral form, and he's able to go from body to body unless they're extremely strong-willed, and then it's difficult. Like Batman, he re can't really stay in Batman. But he says, "Dang Buddhist, too much brain training." Training, and he's like, "Oh, he's like it's like a tight woolly sock." And he's trying to get in the guy, and he ends up doing it. And then we get this awkward exchange between him and this other guy, this tourist. He says, sir, do you know how to find 343 Timmet Lane? He says, wait, I'll, I'll, ha I'll have my map right here. And he says, oh, you're wasting my, your time. I'll find it on Jen, I mean, my cell. Jen, where is, and then he asked the address on there. And I was just like, what, what a jerk, <laughs> you know? And I think that's the point. I think dead man is kind of a jerk at this point, but it was just like, it, it just took me back a little bit. So at this point, uh, he finds the address. He's looking for sensei's address. He know that, knows that this evil sensei that's been, that's had it out for him is at this house and he's, he's trying to find out how it's connected. So he gets there and, uh, 
he's already upset because he's like, oh, this is way too nice of a house for Sensei. You know, he should be in a rat hole. And so then he finds a nice family with a young child there, and he's like, uh, uh, is there also a room with a sleeping monster? Because he's like assuming that Sensei is around here somewhere. And he looks at the baby and he says, adorable. Okay, he's cute. Worth a minute of my time. Hey, kid. Uh, gotta love you kid but tomorrow your parents in this lousy world could be dead by the hands of the sensei and there's this aura around the child all of a sudden and then out pops the sensei in spirit form and then we get this crazy action scene here where he's slicing and dicing dead man and then like ripping him to pieces in astral form and dead man has no idea what's going on and I was like holy crap he's gonna kill dead man and so uh, dead man's able to bring his arm back together and then punches him back and they have they, they have this exchange of words where he's saying um he's saying that there's more to this than what you're doing dead man he says you know there's more to this realm and he's like what what you know he's very he doesn't really know what's going on so they have more strikes back and forth and then the sensei rips his freaking spiritual avatar heart out and i was like oh he's dead but then he's just able to pull it back into his body and instantly be okay and that's where i was kind of like oh you're doing this very strange stuff but then he's instantly okay afterwards so it's like oh okay and the next panel he says you simple fool to think this dimension offers you more than your old reality this is my dimension to control to use on you and he says what repeat that and so they have a uh, more words back and forth he says here in this dimension you are a babe in arms while I am the master because you know he was in the baby and he says the only babe you will destroy is that one look look at you idiot at the baby he's dying and then he rushes back to the baby goes back into me says no my living soul my living soul and as he goes back in there the parents run out and they do this weird thing where they say he's in distress that's the red alarm the worst and I was like, where's the where's the red alarm? I don't see, are you seeing the baby's aura? I don't, you know, it was a little questionable there. And so then um, they're, you know, confiding in the baby. They're comforting the baby. And then Dead Man's just like, how did Batman do this? This miserable murderer will get a new start, another chance. Not that he deserved it. And he'll forget his miserable past. But how did you pull it off? So he's thinking, you know, what? how can I do this? And then that's when um, all of a sudden the stranger shows up. And uh, he says, uh, each of us has our limitations, man. And he says, what do you mean by that? You, you Natalie dress spook <laughs> and he says history tells us that when a path comes unclear becomes unclear it's because something was missed along the way you need to go back and, and retrace your steps and he's like i'm not a time traveler and he says oh but i am but in this instance you don't need to do that you just need to go back to where it began and he says the circus he says yes so he says you need to go back there and find out uh what you're missing so they have an exchange back and forth um Stranger shows him how he can actually have multiple forms from different dimensions at the same time. So he's extremely, he's a lot more powerful than, than Dead Man at this point. So Dead Man heads to the circus, and the circus actually has a new name, a new act called the Dead Man. And it's dressed up after him. So his family is continuing the act and kind of like in his honor and he gives him a, a nice little uh, comment here he says i guess my ego didn't ever let me share the limelight uh, it's a good sign good for you bro so you know he's happy for his brother that he's able to be successful now but then come to find out that his wife and daughter are conflicted with the brother about the brother's parents which is also dead man's parents because he they feel like that they're using him from his money and talent you know what i mean so there's that back and forth that goes on and this didn't really feel that natural because this is a full-grown man he has a wife he has a full-grown daughter and he tells them shut up you're witches and i've had it back off just back off and I was like, I don't know that you would tell your daughter that. I mean, that's a little weird. Like, what a jerk. And then the actors come in and they say, hey, you're on, boss. Let's go. 
they're in pretty cool demon costumes so he heads on out and uh, he says dead man says I don't get it mom and dad really why is Lorna so nuts some screwy family reunion here so then the act starts we get a display of all their acrobatic abilities it's much like um, Dick Grayson's family you know the uh, flying Grayson's and the way they did and all the people are watching and uh, then the uh, the host says, Ladies and gentlemen, cast your eyes skyward and wonder to Dead Man, the greatest trapeze artist of all time. And uh, he's about to attempt, if I'm not mistaken, it's the same trick that uh, Dead Man could do. And so he, he does a spinning move. He goes over to catch, his bro or catch the other uh, actor. And right as he tries to, the other actor is shot. And then... It says in a split second, Dave is dead. His eyes close and then open. I got you. And dead man goes into the dead person's body and is able to grab him and swing the brother to safety, but then jumps out of the body into the next actor. And it kind of threw me off because it happened so fast. I didn't know how to keep up. And so then at that point, the, the dead body falls to the ground and then that's when dead man points to where the bullet came from and uh, he, he actually he jumps into I, I'm, I'm it's hard to keep up here he jumps into another person's body they see the assassin the assassin runs off so then dead, dead man jumps into the police officer that's after him he concentrates he uses his breath he he shoots the gun out of the guy's hands both guns and uh, is able to you know defeat him at that point so then he thinks he's got him he's gonna end him dead man has no problem killing people so he shoots him twice but he ends up wearing Kevlar and runs away so then at that point dead man jumps out and jumps into this huge behemoth tiny which is an, uh, a performer in the uh, circus and runs after him he uses his knowledge of the uh, grounds and how everything is set up to catch up with him and then they have this pretty cool fight in the rain and they have a back and forth and the assassin is faster than tiny but uh, dead man is much smarter and he knows how to use uh, his strength against him he actually uses it to crush the assassin's hip bone and then crushes his sternum and then at that point uh, does some kind of uh, one inch punch Bruce Lee style move on him that you know like I said broke his sternum at that point he's got nothing left so in dead man fashion he opens up the liger the, the lion's cage and throws him in it and uh, says bone up a teep Simba so at that point the stranger shows back up and says you know good job basically in his poetic speech but then um, we get a couple other people show up here the uh, Spectre and Intrican show up and uh, basically they try to save the, the the man from getting eaten by the lion it doesn't work you know he's already dead and then at that point they're all three quarreling over dead man and what has happened so dead man is had at this point he jumps out and he's just he's he's had it and uh, that it's kind of a a neat little scene there but at the same time it's so sporadic and everybody's doing different things at the same time that it's good like it's good that you're able to do that but it's hard to keep up with and it just feels very like thrown together you know what I mean that was my only gripe about this very cool characters I don't really know how I feel about Intrican being in like four different comics in the past two weeks since his comic is coming out all of a sudden, I know what you're promoting, but you know, don't pull a Deadpool, don't have him in everything. Um, it was cool to see the Spectre again, uh, but I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how the next issue is going to go with all four of them in this issue. But I don't know, it's it just really hasn't done it for me so far. I'm kind of just reading it at this point just to find out what's going to happen. And uh, I don't, the art's pretty good, it's very old style, I like it. But, uh, you know, that's just that's my gripes. The story feels very thrown together. I don't know what I think about this, but tell me what you think if you're already reading it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Please support me on my maker support. That's going to go towards uh, my new comic that I'm writing. But tell me what you think about this. I mean, it just ends all of a sudden, and this scene is done. Uh, it's, it's very spread through the story. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. But alright guys, I'll talk to you later. Underground Geek out.